Welcome back, family. Hope you're following along with this year's series. It is Black History Month 2024, and we are going through our library in our house, flipping through some books to see what we had underlined or circled that we found important at the time, funny, you know, information we could build off of, or anything that we want if someone else picked up the book that they could find. We're going through today our Abram Beverly Walker book, lawyer, lecturer, activist from the Kingston Peninsula here, early 1900s, he's rocking pretty big. Uh, yeah, let's just dive right into his book and see what we had underlined here that we thought was pretty interesting. <laughs> First page. Now this is talking about politics and he's speaking about politics in North America that could come in the future. Now mind you, he's saying this in 1903. If they permit rogues and bullies to share or take part in wielding the scepter of government, they will find themselves some of these days face to face with the spectacle that will shock the rest of the world. Nobody can tell the distance that an ill-bred, untutored, ferocious upstart will go once he's vested with power. <laughs> well, hope not. I mean, I don't know if you guys watch politics, but... Hey, Walker, what's going on here, man? You studied Greek, Latin, French, German, but on his own, Abraham did postgraduate work in other language. It's fair success in Hebrew, Zen, Sanskrit, Ethiopic languages. In 1905, he began studying Japanese, then Bantu, the latter being, uh, latter being the language spoken by the great tribes of West and Central Africa. Well-studied brother, well-studied brother. Um... He most assuredly would have realized through his own schooling and comments from instructors that he could compete intellectually with anyone. <laughs> with those young dominant forces, you know. You see them in school. You know, our generation seems to point them out and mock them, like mock intelligence and books and reading and cranial fortitude. But this is a new day, baby. Young, gifted, and black. Get some of that old information. Put that seed in some good soil. Do you have good soil, you have good roots, you have good roots, you have good tree, you have good tree, you have good fruit. I'm convinced after studying, ooh, wait a minute. We're in Canada. So anybody reading, watching, listening, this is a quite the indictment. Not usually what we say, you know, when blacks came to New Brunswick, Canada, etc., etc., the times and the feelings. Now let's see what Abram Beverly Walker, lawyer, activist, and lecturer, has to say in 1903. I am convinced, after studying this matter in all its different phases and aspects, that the white people of Canada are more selfish, more inconsiderate, more timid as a whole in their dealings and transaction with the Negroes than the white people in the United States. <laughs> That's an indictment. Uh... Oh, yeah. <laughs> what does he say? This is, this is a good one. I mean, we live through these moments, you know, um, when you're called out in public and classes and schools and jokes or sayings, innuendos thrown right at you, or you get the quick, you know, not you, you're different, blah, 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 blah. You just wish you could instill um, the understanding you know, without hurting your own knuckles. So this is what Abe was thinking. <laughs> uh, momentarily teaching. Walker openly mused about having the power to turn some of Canada's leading white citizens into woolly padded Negroes, black as crows, and make them undergo for a month what we undergo year after year until they too are exhausted and worn out completely. Concluding this imagery with, yes, if I had that power, I would have heaps of fun. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. Makes sense why I underlined that one. Uh, what else are you saying about me, about Waga? What are they saying about you? Well, thanks for tuning in, like I said, to this series. Um, fall in love with books. Fall in love with books. If my mind can conceive it, 
and my heart can, can believe in my heart can believe it then I can achieve it Muhammad Ali yeah, okay this is a big one this is a really big one pay attention to this light skins light skin mulatto son of a white master and slave girl wrote I might mingle in the circles of whites but to tell you the truth I have no wish to he went on to tell his comrade it is with the oppressed enslaved African race that I cast in my lot and if I wished anything I would wish myself two shades darker than one lighter the desire and yearning of my soul is for an African nationality I want a people to have a tangible separate existence of its own and where am I to look for it I would wish myself two shades darker this is 1905 so we are 2024 when we discuss these things now the conversation is I wish my children turned out lighter so they would not have to go through what I went through now this is not a belief or desire of mine our home here or uh, we wish on anybody other than to love what you create self and knowledge of self um, others but it's interesting that in 1905 or at least this example is a brother wishing two shades darker or today in our conversations we are wishing for it not even to be visible that is a real example of where we have come since 1905 to 2024 I mean the bold words his brother speaking in 1905 how many times do we hear these bold words at all outside of you know the five percent influence uh, hip hop music anyway back onto the book <laughs> the African civilization movement that's where the government was getting together to ship people back to Africa trying to get the black folks to uh, rally the troops you know if they're trying to rally the troops the African civilization movement and the American Colonization Society like I said America sent theirs to Liberia us from the British Commonwealth or whatever you call that the African Civilization Movement was in Britain theirs were going back to Sierra Leone that's why we have that connection to Sierra Leone um, so they got people together to try to rally the troops so all black folks would choose to go back now just from the descendants of slaves not blacks who were here um, not the men and women and families who were here before colonization but just from the fact that 80 percent of the slaves from Africa who came here were men those men were sent to breeding farms and those breeding farms were filled with native First Nations indigenous women so those children are a direct result of the man bloodline of Africa and the female bloodline of North America Central America South America then why would you forfeit your homeland here to go there for your homeland also uh, it seems like a usurping usurping and using the church <laughs> not funny I last much I'm uncomfortable people cry when they're happy not all the time a lot of time though in Africa he said the black man can use their genius and education to spread light and civilization to the indigenous ha inhabitants of the continent this is where he's talking about getting a whole bunch of black folks to go back and civilize Africa. Now, Abe and I will differ in these points. Establish a self-governing colony under the British flag, under the British government at such a time that they could uh, attain a responsible government of their own. He would take with them any whites of a similar ilk who would want to immigrate. Now these people want to go to Sierra Leone, like I said, civilize and from there the entire continent. Now you have to understand when the Berlin Conference uh, where money, investment, and trust funds are fun funding, funneling through here uh, all the way back to the doctrine of discovery which obtained the wealth resource uh, which is fueling this now 
architecture. As an example, the Irish Catholics who starved during the famine years of the 1840s. The Irish Catholics were starving because of the famine, while the Irish grain was shipped to England to feed livestock, because the government had a deal to sell that food. When there was a famine, that food still left to go somewhere else and stay and feed the people on the land in which it grew. That needs to be understood for understanding tactics of where we were at and how we were living. Uh, when he's talking about colonizing, there you go. future colonists not only must be among them intellectuals, but merchants, mechanics, farmers, and tradesmen, burning desire and belief that the African homeland is their God-intended destiny. Yeah, I see, you're going to go back there with your Captain America. Uh, Captain British, well, you know. We are determined to shut the door hard and fast against all who are ignorant, thriftless, and fickle. With this group as a nucleus of the new settlement of naive, naively foresaw that within 25 years, the great African dominion or empire that would be well on its way to stretching the full length and breadth of the continent. Now, see? Going into Africa, you may understand the size of the continent. It wants to go in and from there take over the whole thing. And they naively thought in 25 years, which is this brother's pushing over here to get the bloodlines over here to go over there under Christianity and under Britain and civilize and colonize the entire continent. Understand the Berlin Conference, understand Doctrine of Discovery, understand the Wanna See Conference, understand how all these things go together. Uh, Walker, he wants every a man a Christian charity in high praise of the white race. Uh, yeah. up level there. McDonald had asserted and stated that emigration to Africa is the only correct way to solve the Negro problem and to lift the Negro race up to the level of the Anglo-Saxon, but it will require patience, courage, loyalty, self-denial, genius, leading, learning, and statementship of the highest quality. The only correct way to solve the Negro problem and lift the Negro race up to the level of the Anglo-Saxon will be sent in colonized mines black mixed back to Africa back to the continent to civilize it's, so you understand what gets happened here um, breeding happens in order to have infiltration but three of the ten leading people around uh, the nation of Islam were informants Yo, numbers are big on infiltration. What are we trying to do? Oh, where am I at now? The story made international headlines across Canada, the U.S., and Europe, and here in St. John. Dr. Walker was called upon by the Daily Telegraph in the United States. If the actions of a handful of of these low sorts can result in the kind of mayhem we just witnessed and there is no hope for the black men in the United States for the relations between the two races is too bitter, too toxic, and too mollified. The only solution he claimed was for the educated, intelligent, and industrious blacks to get out of the country entirely and establish a life for themselves in Africa. I'm not saying the man didn't believe it. What I'm saying is I'm with the knowledge we have today uh, and then uh, like the accessibility, obviously. Um, I'd be in great opposition to Brother Aid. But like everything, right? That's why the Black United Front was started in, United, in, in Nova Scotia. The original understanding was so that every branch of black people, no matter what you religious, non religious, um, revolutionary, or pacifist, or um, whatever level you are coming from, if you're from the community, we need that one voice to come together. You can come through your group and then we come to the same round table. All right, circle square. Mm. But yeah, because it didn't. <laughs> During the Civil War, when all able-bodied white Southerners were away at the front, the black man did not rise up and murder all the women and children. All right? Speaking to the humanity. Southern Negroes and will stand at the ends of time. Southern Negroes, and this will stand to the end of time, are incontrovertibly an incontrovertible testimony 
that they are, as a race, so uniformly kind and gentle and trusty that they will not even turn a foul and raving an ugly foe who has his red hand uplifted to thrust dagger into their backs. This is the mixed message, you know. Uh, obviously love, obviously hug, obviously peace, obviously not war. But it's interesting, to one group of people, we're always taught to turn the other cheek, um, wait till the next life. And then the same people telling us that uh, November 11th is the day that you shall not blaspheme. Uh, it's hard to imagine the futility of offering a plea of not guilty, no matter how exculpatory the evidence might be, on behalf of the Negro in such a court. The best thing for the Negro to do would be just to hold his tongue and await sentence. Time's not changing. No other country had said, could this magnitude of mediocrity be produced? His been scathing indictment of the American art scene in general was unrelenting, saying no people on earth are so destitute of traditional inspiration. <laughs> Man, that's a bummer. Uh, every man's work, whether it be literature or music or pictures or architecture or anything else, is always a portrait of himself. His magazine would be used to further his quest to make Africa a Christian continent under English rule and English civilization, claiming Africa would be better, would be become the new Garden of Eden. Dude was getting juiced. In the Garden of Eden there, though, isn't that where humanity comes from? Or at least the rebirth after one of the uh, cataclysms, the cycles, cyclical, not linear. At one point, Tillman was advocating for the bleaching of black people out of existence by intermarriage with whites. That's the way. At one point, Tillman was advocating for bleaching the black people out of existence by intermarriage with whites. Well, Abram Beverly Walker, lawyer, lecturer, and activist. Some of his words, thoughts, and how they can fertilize your mind, my mind, to remove the shadows, add light to the dark corners, so that we can move forward. Um, all in together. All right. Thanks for sticking through. Some of the words are kind of triggering. Some of the concepts are. How do they taste? I mean, this brother's 1905. He's got a literary magazine that's being printed in St. John and being circulated all over. This is just a not normal words of the day being spit around and going around. And now that we're hearing them, how are we doing it now in 2024? We're going past. We're going through. We're blocking. Thanks for the elders. I say for those who put in work. It's Baba Shabazz, Black Rose Nation, 2024 Black History Month. Going through the library saying books, 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 books. books.